Start screaming. Like that means we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the RashInvestor.com's uh, Weekend Frivolity. Uh, this is our uh, fun uh, broiler chicken show. We're Why live. Do we call it broiler chicken show. Hello, everyone. Why not? Welcome back to the <laughs> RashInvestor.com's anyway, uh, uh, Weekend like Frivolity. We're live on YouTube, uh, so this is our. Uh, we will mute that. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, good morning, Joshua and uh, Kobus over there, over on YouTube, and anybody else who happens to pop in. Um, somebody had actually asked out of the level one class specifically if I was going to do a broiler chicken show. I had a, such a weird day yesterday. I don't know. Um, is, is it, um, equinox? Is it, um, uh, the weather changing? I don't know. Very odd sleep patterns. But anyway, I woke up, uh, very dic discombobulated this morning and I didn't know whether I wanted to do one. But uh, someone specifically asked from the level one, hey, you doing one of these broiler chicken shows? Uh, and that's really the, the purpose of these is to make sure that if those guys do um, have questions, you know, please uh, feel free to uh, please uh, chime in, ask away if I can help. Uh, obviously, you know, <laughs> like I reported, a bit of an odd Saturday evening for me. Um, but, um, you know, I was in the lounge posting um, you know, the little uh, trading plan um, um, that I uh, talked about recently. I was posting that at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Very bizarre. Anyway. Um, the point that I'm trying to make here, or oh, geez, if I can get to there, is uh, this session is uh, to help them. And uh, if there are specific questions, uh, feel free to ask. Right? That's the whole point of this. So, um, you know, for the free YouTube audience, same sort of thing. If you guys have questions out there, is it a full moon? Actually, that would uh, explain a lot. <laughs> and it's funny because a whole bunch of our computers had some uh, stuff, weird stuff happen over the past week or two, and we were wondering whether it was a Mercury retrograde or not. You know, one of those things too. Um. So if you're, I see a few people over there uh, posting on YouTube. If you have questions over there, you know, just feel free to ask. I mean, I don't know what the hell, you, you know, so I, I, the, half of my problem here is, you know, of course, people, you know, want you to predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen. You know? Um, yeah, I know, Frog. I don't know what's going on with all that. I saw your message on the uh, video the other day. Um, I responded to the message. Uh, I think you got to... Um, 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 I think I gave you an email address, support at the Rational Investor. But yeah, that's uh, that's totally brutal. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I totally acknowledge your problem. I'm not quite sure what I can do uh, outside of the site. Um, you know, remember, I'm, not, I'm like a chart guy. I'm not a site guy. Um, and of course, you know, on a free broadcast, I don't want to pull up pages that show member information and stuff. So... Uh, you know, when I'm done this, hopefully I won't rant for more than about 45 minutes an hour here. Um, uh, between then and um, and um, the time I have to leave for Liam, which is about 1 o'clock or so, uh, 1.30, um, I'll work away on your issue. Um, you, you have my uh, Twitter address, right? So why don't you uh, follow me on uh, Twitter and all that stuff? And uh, you can uh, DM me. We can just DM away on Twitter if you want to talk to me directly, okay? Uh, but yeah, I'd so obviously something's happened with your membership. But uh, as I sort of said in the reply to you, uh, Rocket Chat had like a major brain fart here recently. And all hell broke loose and we lost like, you know, like days of chat logs and stuff for the school people, which was like a major headache. Uh, and Seward's been running around like a chicken without a head. I mean, what I really want Seward working on is this stuff, and he ends up having to work away on things like fixing the chat interface. Uh, it drives you crazy. Um, so uh, I, I totally acknowledge you. I replied to your uh, comment. Totally appreciate, you know, customer support's super important. Um, and um, Julian's pretty good at getting back uh, within, uh, you know, 24 uh, hours. So um, I'm sure uh, as soon as he's made aware, he might be uh, busy on Twitter and that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> huh. There is no DM option on Twitter. I did tweet to Seward and Joshua. Yeah, there is. Uh, so we don't need to go down there. Um, 
You know, you can, um, yeah, I don't want to show you on Twitter, but yeah, I send messages back and forth. I was talking to Grim last night too. So uh, there is a way to do that. I think you have to follow me and then I have to follow you back or something like that. So. Anyway, uh, like I said, uh, totally acknowledge there's an issue there with you and we're, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll make it a priority, so. Um, all right, and so Teresa, you're saying that there's an issue? Well, it's good that we've got this feedback session for all you guys. <laughs> So uh, Joshua, yeah, Joshua, there's my uh, all-star uh, TA for the level tours right now. Um, and uh, he's just an absolute rock um, on the site. So uh, he said uh, he's reached out here and said that he'll, uh, he'll reach out to uh, Julian too. And if anything, maybe what we should do is uh, since Rocket Chat just blew up like this and it might be difficult for people to... Um, to actually convey uh, the problem, you know, of course, uh, I'll put in this video, uh, just you know, the comments here. I'll definitely just put, um, you know, the uh, support at uh, the rationalinvestor.com uh, if rocket chat um, isn't letting site please send an email sorry for the and somebody wants to join our conversation here um all right so i put that down uh, again in the comments um, and you know my, my apologies definitely um, and uh, thank you Joshua for reaching out and um, if anything what I would suggest Teresa and Frog can you both respond to this um, comment you know just reply or something like that and anybody else who happens to have watched this and they're having problems with the rocket chat, just reply to this uh, specific, and what am I showing you? I'm showing you this, right? If you could uh, reply specifically to this um, message, uh, then at least we'll have a running list of exactly who, um, who needs help. All right. Um, okay, well, that's an interesting start to our conversation today. <laughs> and always good that you've got at least uh, once a week uh, a live body to, to uh, bark at. <laughs> Come on the YouTube uh, free channel and, uh, and uh, complain about how crappy the site is. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> it's a free forum, so, uh, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. If I'm doing a shitty job here, I want to know. Oh, that just opens the door. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, let's get on to uh, sort of market talk. This is uh, uh, primarily our uh, weekend show. We talk pretty much mostly, I think, about crypto on here. Uh, and as I said, this is your opportunity uh, to uh, ask questions. Uh, who was it specifically that was asking uh, me in the level one whether I was going to do this this morning? I think that was you, Kobus. So, Kobus, did you have a specific question for me that you needed answering? Uh, where is he? I think I saw... Kobus, are you here? I know you're over there on YouTube. <clears throat> what did you guys just do? Um... You guys uh, just did introduction to technical analysis, correct? Uh, chat working okay for me. Everything good over here. Thank you, Oscar. Appreciate that. Uh, due to major update, it's best to clear your browser cache. Yep, that's uh, definitely important. Hey, there's Shane, the man, the myth, the legend. Um... Technical analysis was the topic of the week. Did you have any follow-up questions with regard? And keep in mind, that's sort of like the, the introduction. I mean, you could argue all of uh, the candy stories, uh, mostly type TA concepts. But, uh, okay, it's out there. If you have a question, uh, just let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer that. Um, you know, I, I think everybody here watching and, you know, maybe make a note. Uh, Brian's just wasting everybody's time up to about 
10 minutes in. <laughs> Uh, and we'll start doing, and not wasting time. I mean, Frog, your issues are important. Sorry, that's probably poor choice of words. But let's uh, hit the Bitcoin chart and sort of, um, uh, you know, do some um, material here that, that um, yeah. Okay, <laughs> enough said. Uh, I, I really like this uh, this study that this uh, Fitbit, uh, Fit, Fit B, Fit B, I think that's his name on Twitter, uh, put together. And it sort of called the entire sort of bull cycle for crypto and Bitcoin. Um, I do like the idea of uh, this uh, yellow, orange, green. Well, not orange, but I think it's yellow or it's green, whatever. Uh, this bottom sort of curve here defining sort of it almost feels like that's like your value curve um, and um, recently uh, I tried to replicate his study and if you are watching this video sir uh, um, you know feel free to comment if I've gotten something wrong here but uh, in essence these uh, the purple curve I think sort of defines the range of sort of that value trade when the public's not really interested, uh, not really like Facebook, uh, Facebook, <laughs> face rip kind of moves. Um, and then if we can accept above purple, then we go into sort of face rip mode. You know, this is Silk Road, uh, Mt. Gox, and of course, uh, CME event here. Um, so we worked our way right back down to uh, what I, I, I think on balance, I think you could say that that's sort of value. Um, you know, we had people on the site who put uh, fundamental analysis uh, models together and they came up with like cost of production of $2,600, $2,700 US at the time. And price ultimately bottomed. What's that low there? It hit like 3100 You know, that doesn't surprise me. And within that kind of window, I think I can live with those kind of numbers. Um, and of course, there were, you know, marginal players. There were people with cost of production much, much, much higher. So, um, you know, probably when we did this study, we were looking at sort of the survivors <laughs> through all of that. Um, interestingly enough, and I think it's almost like the face rip event happens, in my opinion. Um, and then we have to almost let Mother Nature take over. Um, and... I think probably the best illustration of Mother Nature taking over is uh, this conversation that I've had with you guys repeatedly. Um, you know, here's the insane face rip, holy and crazy move, right? And then Mother Nature has to sort of step in and say, okay, well, you know, let's let's sort of you know bring everything sort of back back to earth. Um, Merchant says. Uh, uh, I have a question regarding the dynamic yield curve. Oh, cool. And you post it in the lounge. Uh, in the story, it seems you say that banks borrow at their short term. And the public and the interest rate that banks borrow money to learn. Um. Okay, I see your question, uh, and I'll try and uh, get to it. Uh, uh, okay, uh, cool, Teresa. Good to know. Uh, you know, crazy rocket chat. And, oh, man, just uh, doesn't end, eh? But, uh, but, and definitely, this is sort of down Seward's alley as well, right? Being the uh, chief technology officer, what's wrong with the technology? Right? So, uh, the three of us hopefully will attack this issue in earnest. Um, I did see your question here regarding yield curve. I'll, I'll try and speak to your question. I mean, uh, uh, I'm just another market participant. I'll try my best, uh, to try and address your question. So cool. Um, okay. So just to finish off this sort of overview of what I'm seeing out of Bitcoin, you know, really insane face rip move and that sort of curve, uh, that longer term curve sort of suggested, you know, could we kind of, so you move back down to support. You know, technically speaking, I love to use this uh, white line. This is a 200 period moving average on a weekly chart. So it's like a, what I like to call sort of like a four year business cycle uh, moving average. Uh, and I thought it was interesting how price came down into there. Um, you know, on this sort of dump following uh, the event and then into reload zones, 
You know, and especially breaking everybody's heart, bringing the market all the way right back down to this two, three thousand dollar area. Um, you know, nice W's come in on price at seventy eight point sixes, and I, you know, I think on balance that was, you know, obviously hindsight twenty twenty, that was the bottom, um, and we just had nothing more than just a very natural uh, fifty percent retracement of that down move, and this is sort of like what I mean by like Mother Nature taking over. Um, and, uh, I wanted to show, but I guess I don't have it on that chart. Which one is it? Oh, darn. If I got rid of it, that would suck. Um, but I had a uh, totally awesome, uh, yeah, it looks like it's gone. Darn. Um, uh, my computer fritzed out there last week, so I lost a lot of the cool charts and studies I had on. Oh yeah, remember there's that fundamental analysis study we kept an eye on there. Um, so, uh, recently I had on the charts and sort of why I was cursing there, uh, showing that this 50% retracement was almost, um, half of the duration of the up move. Like, I think actually the best illustration is this correction was almost exactly one year in duration from top to bottom. And this 50% bounce, mother nature taking over was almost exactly 50% of the uh, time that it took uh, to come down. Uh, and so then over the past, I guess, I guess six months or so, been sort of, you know, pondering, um, well, probably the best thing to do is just the time horizon. Uh, there to there. Would it make sense for the market to do a 50% retracement of this move uh, given you know, and um, as we said, I mean, this was quite remarkable, right? You see that it took 28 day bars and uh, from peak to trough there was uh, almost exactly one year. Uh, I think I got that right. Yeah, right there. Um, so market moving in a very sort of symmetrical fashion. Like I said, mother nature sort of taking over kind of thing. Um, so would it make sense uh, that in about half of this time, we have a move back to the 50% rule? And I hate to say it, but I think uh, Mr. Gann uh, did it again. So, uh, you know, half of 28 would be 14, something like that. And that's basically what that bar is there. So uh, I think this is, a, it's, it, it's almost to me, it's just sort of like the natural way the market's sort of cleaning itself up after just an absolutely insane um, rally. Uh, and I've drawn triangles and stuff like that to sort of show how important this is. I don't think I have that on here. Mind you, it might, if we're really lucky, it might be here. Did I do it here? Um, nope. Oh, fudge. Yeah, it's a different chart. Uh, it was the chart before my charts blew up. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. Um, so uh, I spent a lot of time recently talking about how I sort of thought that um, this 50% rule was going to act as sort of a magnet. And I was sort of amusing about this uh, just recently to myself, thinking that, you know, you sure get chewed up a lot in the sort of lower time frames, you know, humming and on, bull, bear, whatever. But if you actually just zoom out and just think about this in simplest terms, all that's happening is just an oscillation around the 50% rule. And the problem now, of course, is that this is uh, still very much a conversation of, uh, darn. Um, can we even recapture the medium term moving average here um, and sort of hold up this bull? Uh, we lost the short term uh, support moving average um, on that failure about a month or so ago on $1.25 billion worth of Bitcoin sold, whatever. Uh, that definitely changed the tone of the market. And now, really, it's just a question of can can we sort of clean up following the breakdown? Um, and we still haven't even really uh, recaptured this 30 SMA. We, you know, we lost it well below it. Can we recapture it? And then the worst part about this is that, okay, great, we can recapture it. You got the 13 EMA staring us in the face as almost like a roadblock right in front of us. 
So, I mean, it's going to be tough sledding here for the next little while, no doubt about it. Um, also, too, um, you know, there was a guy who lived uh, about, a hundred, I guess, about 100 years ago. And yeah, I don't know when he died. But um, he suggested that markets often like to sort of, you know, especially after a consolidation and a dump, Think of this as, uh, you know, accumulation distribution. So after, especially after a big run up, this is sort of the process of the institutional players who bought down here, bought this uh, weekly W down in here, um, them distributing it to the public, just basically uh, unloading. Of course, the shark traders, they're all selling mountain man levels up there, right? There's 50% rule. We talked about that. So, I mean, it, it shouldn't really surprise us that this happened. Um, but um, there's a gentleman who actually sort of, and actually I think we even have it in the library. He, um, he articulated what this sort of markup and markdown process looks like. I uh, wonder if I have it in here. Yeah, here it is. Mr. Wyckoff. Uh, and, you know, you can argue that, you know, uh, 2,000 to 3,000, 4,000, whatever, that was sort of that accumulation phase, double bar, weekly W's, all that talk. Then the move up into, uh, you know, 10, 15,000 kind of area, that's sort of the end of the move. And then it goes through a distribution phase, and now we go through sort of the markdown process to start the cycle all over again. I mean, it's really weird, but it's sort of like, this is capitalism 101, and it doesn't matter whether you're in the stock business, the cryptocurrency trading business, the uh, watermelon business, the banana business, the rubber tire business. It all works on this principle. Um, you know, in various different industries, you have like wholesalers and then retailers. Um, and ironically enough, in the stock market, you have the same thing. You know, IPO people, that's sort of like wholesalers. Uh, selling to a can of worms and Goldman Sachs and all that, and they're showing it to the public. That's the retailers. And we just go through this process over and over and over and over. So the point that I'm trying to make here is hopefully what you see here is there's a distribution process, but this is, there's usually, remember, um, you know, institutions can't really sound, uh, sell aggressively like down markets because if they want to get filled in size, they're just going to crush the market. So what they actually have to do is they have to like engineer uh, a public euphoria and a public uh, rah, 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 and bull, 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 panic buy kind of thing. And you could even argue to a certain degree that's what that sort of Bitcoin rally up into uh, uh, this, uh, you know, reload short zone kind of probably did. Because notice that the rally peak happened to correspond nicely with the original market structure breakdown. So institutions can't sell in size on the way down or they'll just crush the market. If they want to sell, they look at this chart and they go, oh, gee whiz, where's the M's and W's and there's the M way up there. So if I want to sell, really, I got to somehow engineer some sort of rally and get the public all just panic buying into that level so I can get filled in size. But anyway, that's uh, another conversation. Uh, you know, that's about higher time frames, just specifically lower time frame. This is kind of ironically enough, it's the same principle. But hopefully, you know, you see the uh, line chart right here, right? Lots of Emmys and breakdowns. Institutions can't sell down markets. Okay, so we got to engineer some sort of counter trend rally to get price back to the original breakdown level, just like that mountain man tag failure there. Um, and this is actually what's called a Wyckoff check, where uh, basically we go through a distribution process. The market breaks down. Institutions want to sell this level. They really would like to. Um, they can't sell this down market, so they have to somehow, because they'll crush the market if they just, you know, market order sell. So they have to somehow engineer some sort of counter trend rally, get, you know, the public, Joe Sixpack, all rah, rah, bull into these levels so that they can get filled in size. It's, it's actually pretty normal. Um, so I, I kind of think that that's kind of what's going on right now with Bitcoin. Um, you know, again, uh, we'll get rid of all the little squiggly lines. 
Uh, I'll just delete this. Uh, what the heck? Uh, boom. 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 So uh, you can see the very natural M there. You can see where the breakdown level it is, and basically it is this line. And you can also see that 13 EMA is going to be a brick wall on any kind of like, you know, rally out of this zone here. So put it all together. That's sort of what I wanted to, you know, impart on you here is I think what's happening right now is this, you know, these, the check and kind of like the breakout, this move back here to test the original breakout level. Same sort of logic. Institutions can't buy up markets. If they wanted to buy, they see the structural breakout level, so they bring the market back to that level. And if this really is a bull, they'll step up in size off of this level and take it higher, et cetera, et cetera. So if this really is a bear, we should see a check of that breakdown level and then a dump. So, um, you know, I mean, the only time will tell what's going to happen, considering... Um, you know, I, we sort of started off this conversation with um, the market seems to find value at this yellow line here. And I noticed that it's not like it just hits it once and then leaves. Notice that it sort of bounds in between these uh, purple and yellow a few times. And then it goes into sort of face rip mode and same sort of thing. You know, it just sort of bounds around between these and then goes into face rip mode. So I get the distinct feeling, right, especially if we think sort of like that Wyckoff kind of check, um, that, you know, ironically enough, there's the last sort of weekly W and right on that yellow line. Um, you know, a nice little test of that, that area here. I don't think it's unrealistic. Um, it's just I think over the short term, uh, we're still battling very much uh, with the 50% level. And I've often seen that sometimes these things can take a while to resolve. Um, as you can see, sort of AB equals CD kind of thinking, that's a little bit lower than where we are right now. And uh, if we change this study from just a 50% rule study to things like reload zones, uh, you'll notice that the reload zone, oh, if I can load it, uh, all right, what am I doing wrong here? Hmm. Is that the right one? That's the one I think I want. Hey, there we go. Um, Mount Man sitting there at 7,200 and change. And really, you know, if I had my sort of druthers where I'd really like to be a buyer of Bitcoins, it's right down in this window right here. It's about like 5,400 or so. Notice that would be sort of right along um, that four year business cycle moving average, 78.6. Look how the profile here has got this funny hole in it sitting basically right at that level. Um, so that's, I mean, if, if somebody even asked me recently, you know, about trade location, and I'm kind of like, you know, this is a really difficult trade location. This is, it's not, it's not the best place, I think. Having said that, you know, can we explain short-term price action? Why is the market catching a bid? And I'm kind of thinking 50% oscillations. And then really the market, you know, especially if the big boys want to get short in size, they're going to want to do one of those Wyckoff checks, probably against this 13 EMA, candle body lows, all these tails in here. Notice that's also to the high of value there. Um, you know, do one of those checks um, and then uh, we move lower. So, and I, who knows how long that's going to take. Did notice in the stock market that sort of risk on is trying to catch a bit of a bid here. Uh, you can see the stock market's got a little bit of a W going on. You can see oil's got a bit of a W. Interestingly enough, you know, Bitcoin actually W'd out there about a week or so, kind of leading uh, risk on. And what's interesting about this too is that Bitcoin really led the risk off dump. So, uh, you know, if you do subscribe to this idea of risk on, risk off kind of idea, I, it does make sense for Bitcoin, from, uh, from my perspective, to move back higher here, considering the way that risk-on assets are looking. Uh, and then conversely, risk-off assets look like they're all falling out of bed. Um, all right, well, I hope that was uh, helpful for you guys. Um, let's see, anything else? 
Right. And interesting, too, uh, notice the spreads here. It looks like Litecoin spreads are trying to perk up here a bit. I think that's Litecoin, yeah. So, um, you know, and it's interesting, too. We did have a nice sort of battle at the zero line on the spreads um, for uh, Bitcoin. And it's trying to work its way higher. Same sort of thing with Ethereum. Ethereum looks a little heavy here, though, right in the short term. These can always flip over on a dime, but at least they're not, you know, like... Uh, um, Back there, sort of, you know, middle of September kind of idea. Things were looking, you know, pretty uppy. Uh, and then not seeing any follow through, especially on things like Ethereum, just fell right out of bed on the spreads. So we're not in that kind of environment anymore. So that's good. And again, sort of the general idea that the market could move higher. Um, has this uh, Wyckoff check over here on the Bitcoin dominance actually shifted yet? Um, I think this thing can actually work a little bit higher, right? But interesting how the previous sort of Wyckoff check there didn't actually hit that level. So, you know, we'll see how this goes. No really definitive information, but on balance, I do like the idea that that at least the, um, the more speculative part, if you will, of this space, um, you know, the altcoins, it's not just a one-way uh, railroad uh, in, in Bitcoin's favor and the alts just falling out of bed. So at least we have a bit of back and forth. And I kind of noticed when I was looking at things like BNB, and I, I like to follow BNB as sort of a good proxy for, uh, you know, what is this sort of speculative temperament? What's the feeling in the market? Um, and... Um, um, you know, I mean, you can clearly see uh, we had W's actually come in down here. Um, serious tests of W's. So I think you can make the argument you got a pretty solid floor down in this area. Uh, double bottom breakout off of this W now. Um, rally up to uh, resistance and a pull back to the midpoint of that channel. Cute little head and shoulders right off that channel. And a push to new highs. So, you know, on balance, this to me doesn't look like a down market. This actually looks like an uppy market. So altcoins on balance, they should be okay. Um, eh, I mean, you can see sort of the, what's going on. Look at Doge. I know, no wonder Shane was here this morning. Doge is just going crazy here. <laughs> Not crazy. Crazy in a sort of 2019 altcoin markets. <laughs> State. But anyway, good to see uh, Doge has perked up a little bit. Um, and a couple of the names, uh, Kevin, uh, my co-host, the Duke of Albuquerque, he was really interested in this CIS. Hopefully it's self-explanatory. Good looking chart. Um, I went and picked up a little bit of this storage on these W's here. I was underwater for a bit. Looks like the rally this morning took us back to scratch. But on balance, certainly nothing to be kind of concerned about there in the mm -hmm. short term. Uh, I want to keep an eye on Alex Sturk's coin, Ubik. Um, I got a funny feeling. He's sort of one of those sort of flying under the radar screen kind of cryptos. Um, and um, I get the impression that um, the Ubik team's feeling a little bit more optimistic these days. So, you know, obviously, um, you know, I've said this repeatedly, coin pickers market, you know, get out there and hunt your setups. I think... There probably are names that are flying. I I haven't really been paying attention. Like I said yesterday, I was <laughs> my A. And actually, you know what I've actually been spending a lot of my time and attention on recently is, uh, and really, I want to do this more as sort of a demonstration of best practices. Frankly speaking, I couldn't care whether this setup works or not in the end. We have a whole library of setups that I've gone through. If I really need a setup, um, to uh, to trade. I mean, I got tons of setups that I know are working. Um, this was a fun experiment recently on just how do you go through the process of building and vetting out a setup? Um, and what was really interesting about this is that just literally, I, I don't know whether this setup's even going to work or not. I, I really don't know. Somebody on the site uh, explained to me because of the small numbers that um, actually because of commission implications, it makes it extremely difficult to make money on this model. Uh, but at the same time, too, I'm just simply going through the process of how do you vet a setup? So we started this experiment about two or three weeks ago. Uh, maybe a month ago. Um, 
We actually started the experiment on the injection of volatility off of this event right here, this daily downturn in the uh, daily uh, contract uh, for this uh, perpetual slob, XBD. And the basic premise was uh, if the four hours and the dailies are pointing in the same direction, then just hunt fractals off the 15 minute and just take every damn um, uh, setup you see. And let's just see what it, the, the results were. And so uh, big arrows are the daily, uh, the small arrows are the four hour. You can see it goes bear, goes bull, goes bear, goes bull, goes bear, goes bull. Um, and that's basically what these signals are. Right, uh, bull, bear, etc. Um, so, what ends up happening is you get sort of like one of these kind of scatter charts, if you will. This is the 15 minute chart. These are all the different setups. And as I said, sometimes you go on pause, sometimes um, uh, you're extremely active. So, um, I, and actually, I made it really simple in that uh, on TradingView, you can actually have TradingView itself tell you when there's a fractal. I mean, how easy is that? All I gotta do is just simply uh, ask what the daily's doing, uh, ask what the four hour's doing. When they're both the same, you just drill down to the 15 minute and then you just throw on your little Williams fractal tool and every time a fractal fires, you just take the trade. <laughs> Ironically enough, and I was actually uh, watching a couple uh, videos uh, earlier uh, in the week and one guy was saying, you know, for some people we were going through personality studies and all that. Um, and um, I would highly recommend uh, I was I was pretty um, pretty impressed with it. I'd highly recommend uh, everybody, and I'll even post it on YouTube because I thought it was so good. I would highly ever recommend everybody watch this video. Somebody post it in the lounge, and this is the great part about uh, TRI is um, you know quite often you know Brian has winning trades, he has losing trades. You know I don't even expect it. I would l I love to be right 66% of the time, which means I'm saying I would love to be wrong 33% of the time. If you could guarantee me that I will be wrong 33% of the time, I'm pleased as punch. <laughs> so, you know, and it's interesting. Somebody here is like uh, saying, um, uh, all right, well, good. That's uh, actually, I kind of like that over on YouTube. Omar says uh, this gentleman, um, owns Wyckoff and teaches this method and uh, I'm a member of his Discord, pretty spot on. Okay, great. And if anything, what I love about the TRI community, and this is what we do basically all day long, is we're just constantly exchanging ideas. Uh, one plus one equals three. You know, absolutely, you're gonna make better decisions. If And actually, this guy in this video even talked about this, how, and I've always insist that it's a really good idea to have trading partners. Um, but he said that he got together with another guy as a partner and their personality types are exact opposite. And actually that's really good because then, you know, you, you know, your own personality type is going to definitely affect how you approach the market and the way that you look at market and trading and all that. So that's what this, uh, this, uh, video was. And I would highly recommend, I threw it in the library. I was so impressed with that. Um, I, you know, for whatever it's worth. Uh, and there's one part of this video where he breaks down the sort of different uh, representations in society of uh, the different personality types. And for the ladies, there's actually a different curve for uh, women. So please don't be insulted. At th through it, he even shows it. But it's interesting. Uh, he said that these are all the wackos in the world, and they represent a very small percentage of the population, and they're the ones that actually take all these big chunks uh, money. And he was saying like, uh, the people that are in this category, they're the ones that are buying the Lexuses at Christmas, um, uh, funded by all these huge people that all act sort of collectively the same way. And I thought that was fascinating because that's, that's a really interesting perspective on humanity. And, um, and this was sort of a, a part of his conversation. Uh, I won't tell you in this video where Brian lies, but thankfully I'm in one of these guys. <laughs> but uh, it was really interesting as uh, different people on the site were going through the survey and coming up with their uh, who they are and what their personality types were and all that. 
uh, how a lot of TRIers actually fall into these categories. So I was, uh, I was pretty happy with that. But anyway, this is a really, really good uh, uh, video. So I'd highly recommend that you uh, you watch that. Excellent job, whoever you are, sir. Um, I don't know whether that's, that's who this guy. Back to the future tradee. So anyway, good video. Um, all right. Uh, totally got off topic. I don't even know how we got on this topic. But... Um, uh, what should we talk about here? So it's going to give you the update on what I think Bitcoin's doing. Uh, very difficult area. I uh, really, you know, too late to be a seller, too early to be a buyer. Kind of caught in no man's land right now. Really choppy back and forth. Uh, and it's really interesting testament to this day trading model. I think that's how we got off to this. Is, um, you know, when the market was trending down hard here um, through... Um, through this period. This is a trend following model, right? Makes sense. Um, um, uh, four hours daily is pointing in the same direction. Just keep hitting the goddamn bid. Every time the so market shows any signs of failure, just go with it, go with it, go with it. And it produces some really interesting results through both of these reporting windows. Um, interesting that we're in um, um, kind of a sideways market right now, kind of like what I was talking to you there a moment ago. Uh, and if we look at things like the uh, the daily charts and the hourly charts and stuff like that, um, you know, you know, there's that sort of too late to sell. Remember, I said if I was a professional, this is where I'd be short. I'm um, totally missed the trade, and the trade just had that perfect target hit. Doink! Oh, drive you crazy. Um, because everything was sort of pointing down, I wasn't really thinking uh, like trade-wise bullishly. I was following this model very closely. And um, if anything, I kind of like this. I think this is a really good lesson that if you follow very strict risk-reward uh, matrix, you can actually have a system that, that produces pretty shitty results. And yet you can actually come out scratch or you can even come out in this case just slightly positive please understand and actually i ran both of the numbers and you know like kind of like what i said earlier i want this to be a sort of a demonstration of best practices and i put the challenge out for the site members could you not only uh follow the trade uh setup but actually log everything uh, in your, um, in your, uh, let's see, how am I going to do this? Uh, maybe we'll go like that and go copy. Could you log everything in your spreadsheet um, so that you, um, you have a detailed record of exactly what happened? Not, you know, this unfortunately is, it's a pain in the butt, but it is part of this sort of learning this profession, learning the process. So, uh, you know, on my spreadsheet this weekend, this is what this log looks like. Um, and I mean, the interesting thing here is you can see this is loss, 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 win, loss, scratch, win, loss, win, win, scratch, loss, scratch. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing to write home about, right? But at the same time, too, what I found fascinating about this is, and, you know, this was interesting. If you actually just go off of the net, uh, you know, profit and loss, PNL, BTC, and I just used really, really simple metric. I just simply said risk 0 0.01, reward 0 0.02. I'm not rocket science. I'm still sort of vetting all of this out. Just want to keep it really simple. Um, so if you just go off of sort of uh, gross returns, ironically enough, this actually, you know, what it did was it batted, uh, let's see if I can just blow this up here for you. It batted <laughs> terribly, 36%. Four wins, seven losses, and three scratches. But, and this is, I've tried to tell people this in the public. I try to tell students this. This is the key to making money at this game is to make damn sure that when you're right, you get paid relative to when you're wrong. And in this case, being right four times produced uh, plus 400. Uh, being wrong seven times produced loss of 350. Of course, the scratch trades and zero. So, you know, aside from fees and aside from commissions, this model is running 36%. And ironically enough, it's still profitable. 
Now, I completely understand that's not really a realistic world. And if you're going to track this stuff accurately, you probably ought to take commissions into account. So I am trying to do that in a very tertiary sort of way. And the model, uh, I think the calculation I finished with here, the models uh, after commissions paid um, is down 0 0.01 BT, uh, 0 0.018 BTC. So, uh, you know, this weekend, those, you know, was about 11 trades, 10 trades produced, you know, I mean, the commission's pretty, uh, the, the broker's pretty happy. You know, it paid uh, commissions. Now, what this probably means is that, you know, if I can go through the process of vetting that at least 66% of the time I can hit two to ones, clearly this reporting period was a very tough reporting period, but... Uh, and I have to go through and, um, you know, my homework through the week is I have to fill out all of these trades manually um, based on this data that I just did up on the price chart. Um, you know, my job, and frankly speaking, mm -hmm. I love uh, Grimm's insistence that the level oneers have to uh, book 100 trades uh, before they can really uh, believe in any sort of setup uh, subconsciously. Um you know, this uh, process up to here was about 60 trades. And at this point, you know, it was actually doing pretty good. It was up quite a bit of money. So I do like the fact, and, you know, it's kind of funny. Seward was on the site uh, doing his uh, Monday morning report a week or two ago, and he was like, I had 11 winning trades in a row. And he was like, oh, my God, I'm so worried. And I'm like, why? 11 winning trades in a row? You'd think you'd be happy, right? And he's like, well, but... You know, statistics, I know a loser's coming. <laughs> and I thought that was a beautiful anecdote of a trader's life. So, you know, I think if anything, I like this because when we look at the uh, one hours and the four hours, we're in a, you know, we are not in a trending market state through this, uh, through this period here. Right. Yeah. I mean, the mark, if you just bought and hold, right, the uh, institutional moving average, I guess that's a four hour there. So uh, let's uh, go four hour. If you followed the four hour, right, and you bought here and sold here and then bought back here, you know, the short trade lost money. If you just, you know, I sold here and bought here, I lost money. So the fact that the, uh, that the uh, sort of, trading plan actually came out gross positive through that type of market state produced what I would consider subpar, uh, not impressive uh, win-loss resort at all through, but at the same time too, through a really crappy um, higher time frame signal, that actually speaks really well to me. And as I'm vetting out my trading system, uh, and this trade setup, T to me, that's the kind of sort of journal information that I think is actually extremely valuable. Uh, and it's just a testament that, you know, in this case, like I said, we're not even running a, uh, a winning trading strategy, uh, you know, like win loss rate. It's 36%. That's shitty. And yet it still actually was able to eke out a, a gross profit. Now, like I said, that's not taking commissions into consideration. This is just gross numbers. So. Anyway, interesting, um, um, you know, observation there. And I'm just going to keep following this along. There's really nothing to change here. Um, you know, because the four hour just turned up and the daily is still down, I'm on pause with regard to this plan. So that's sort of why on the, uh, the table there I showed you, I put sort of the gray boxes. This, I think this reporting period is done. Um, I did find it interesting, and I posted this out last night, that um, as we were sort of going through that process, and this basically was the weekend, I mean, just really a do-nothing market, really. Um, we actually had bullish uh, bot setups uh, come in, and I actually tweeted this out last night because... Um, the uh, four hour and the one and the daily are so close to turning bull here, right? In fact, the four hour did turn bull. This daily, all it's going to take is just some sort of push in the bum here, and it looks like it wants to go up. I mean, the daily technically does have a you know, it's a candle uh, tail 
double bottom, but it technically does have a double bottom working here. Um, and this might be sort of the process of that sort of the bot after the double bottom forming um, to take us higher. Um, and I've often suggested this, you know, if you actually see W's that come in on your moving averages, that's actually very bullish. And similarly, if you see M's come in on your moving averages, that's actually extremely bearish. You know, you can sort of see the M up here. Uh, beautiful M, look at that M right up there. Uh, nice W there in the moving average. I mean, you can just, I mean, do a study for yourself. When you go and find these, you're just like, wow. So I noticed that the uh, that the fast moving average here off the daily 13, uh, no, this is institutions, isn't it? So this is a nine period moving average. It's actually trying to W out here. So uh, this hasn't turned bull yet, and I think it's gonna need a nice punch up through the top here to turn bull. This still needs a bit of work. But I, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Um, I did uh, tweet out last night that I thought that, you know, lower time frames, sort of same sort of thing, uh, AB equals CD, bullish bots, if they turned up, uh, and the tweet that I put out was if they if those bullish bot objectives get hit off of that like one hour It's going to start forcing these higher time frames to turn back up So as it stands right now the four hours back turned to bull as you can see it's really fighting here uh, My hunch is that this thing will uh, finish this bar, but you never know I mean geez the market could totally just crap out right here, but my hunch is this uh, bull signal is uh, is uh, gonna hold here, we'll see, only time will tell. Um, and actually interesting to see, uh, what do we got happening on the uh, short term? So, and I was sort of conflicted here this morning because uh, we did have one, uh, you know, inside bar fractal. And like I said, you can use the Williams fractal tool to actually highlight these. Uh, so you can see it, it fired there. Uh, I have a rule that I've injected into this plan now that if 50% of the anticipated move is hit, I'll move my stop to scratch. So I think in this particular one, boom, you were stopped out at scratch there. Uh, but it was interesting to see right up against these highs, lo and behold, here comes another fractal. But because the four hour has turned bull here, I think I'm on pause right now. So that's sort of what this reference is here, this arrow here is basically gone back on pause. As you can see, I have that right there. <coughs> now, uh, I mean, could you make the argument that there is a 15 minute bearish fractal working? Yeah, you could. Um, but that's not this trading plan, right? What I'm doing here is I'm vetting out a setup here. I'm not trading opinion. The setup is when dailies and four hours agree, uh, I take whatever fractals fire in whatever direction that is. Dailies and four hours right now don't agree. So I'm on pause with regard to this plan. And really, like I said earlier, that's what I really want to do out of all this, is really what I want to do is I want to be the demonstrator on the site day in, day out of best practices. Um, that's really what I want to do here. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't know whether I mentioned it earlier, but it was really interesting last night. Like I said, I uh, tweeted this out, bullish bot. All right, traders got to trade. I mean, if you were sitting there and you saw this one low, two low, three lows, uh, and you were like, shit, Brian, I, I mean, I'm a bot trader. I got to take this bot. Uh, hats off to you. You can see, boom, move stop to scratch hit. Didn't come back to scratch. Move stop to trailing hit at this point. Rallied up. The target here, 57.50. Uh, hit a high there, 56.50. Did you have the patience and discipline not to do anything? Market pulls back all the way down to here, and you're like, oh, man, I got, where's my Lambo, damn it? <laughs> Ironically enough, for a guy like me, it's only this move here now that I actually get to move my stop up, right, to that level. Market does nothing for another hour or two, and then, boom, hits your target. Merry Christmas. Interesting off of the hourly, though, but kind of like what we were seeing off that 15-minute um, I could potentially see an inside bar here, you know, uh, and I suppose we could even go something like there, down to there. This might even set up things, something like an El Tanguinator, 
and again, this isn't part of this trading plan. I'm just sort of talking to you guys here now. If I go 15 minute, and then why don't we, for fun, we'll throw on some indicators and hello. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's weird. Uh, is that the indicator? All right, well, something's wrong with OBB there. <laughs> All right, but uh, what I see here is a move to new high, and look at MACD. Big Daddy Mechelmikia. Boom. So as of this point right here, you can officially say this market is in confirmed divergence. Um, and really, you know, that hourly fractal level, that's probably going to be a loss of that level right there. Uh, I think you could make the argument that this is uh, an El Dangonator. Uh, let's see, that goes there to there. Uh, this would definitely be for lower time frame players, no doubt about it. Uh, but probably something along the lines of there. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, there, to there, and to there. Oh, 1.78, not quite. No, um, I would prefer this be the two to one. But, uh, you know, could you let this thing, I mean, could this work at 1.78 to one? Sure. Uh, but hey, I wouldn't call it an El Tangonitor. Um, as well, if we draw some simple trend lines, right? There's support. And there's support. And my hunch is, uh, yeah. So really our price action right now. Oh, interesting. Man, this is messy. Messy, messy, messy. Oh, come on you. All right, it's not something like that. And I'm just using Max here. I mean, we could use any one of these. Um, so trend line support using market structure. Yeah, I think that looks pretty legit. So uh, market's playing with this one right now. Boom, 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 boom. What well, was support now becomes resistance. This also, too, is not a bad example of waiting for an M or a W on the other side of a trend line. And where's next trend line support? Looks like it's down here and uh, down here. And gee whiz, there's that 50% level just nice and snuggy it all right in there. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, I can't call it an L Tanganator because it's not two to one. Don't really like the look of this. If anything, you want to be really slick. Uh, let's see if you YouTubers can pull this off through the day is uh, probably, uh, yeah, my hunch is like the trader's trade would be to uh, take short shots, candle body highs, take short shots up in this area up here if you get any sort of counter trend rallies up into there. Uh, and the more sort of conservative, slower, yeah, I'll take a bit bigger risk. I'm not really in a huge hurry. I think uh, that's basically a loss of that level and just risking against those highs. So that's kind of what I see happening here right in the short term. Um, and, you know, I mean, the interesting thing is, is this is a four hour church. I mean, if this thing just completely craps out here, maybe the actually it looks like, yeah, see, it's already turned up pretty good. This would really have to crap out hard to break this. So. Uh, <laughs> I get. I think the way that I'm looking at this now is it's pointing up, but it just had that big bot objective hit, and so as a result, nice 50% retracement, sort of clean up, maybe make a higher low here somewhere in this area here, maybe even against these moving averages. Um, I think that's that that makes sense here in the short term. So anyway, all right. Well, I hope you're having fun. I have no idea if I'm giving you guys any value or not, but sure love this uh, chart setup. Actually, I get a pretty clear idea of what I see happening in the market when I look at the market from this and sort of combine the time frames. Uh, really helps you get a good, pretty clear idea. Uh, all right. Um, I am really liking this crazy idea here. 
Um, sometimes these, uh, and really if I just take this off, I don't know whether you can sort of see this. If you actually think of this as sort of like the midpoint of some sort of move, can you see how almost these are like mirror on opposite side? The only difference is, is that this part here is like a, it's an inverse mirror of the other side. Uh, I don't know whether that explains what I'm trying to say here or not, but um, this is, uh, and actually Joshua, he loves to post this. I don't know whether I can find it or not. I should, you think I'd have it in like my uh, images here, but I probably don't. Uh, do I, maybe if I'm lucky. No, I don't know what it is. I never seem to find it. Um, has anybody got the billiard ball uh, theory image just off the top of their head? I know if Joshua is watching this, he always has it handy. Um, well, I should put it in the library. I don't know why it's not in here. Um... Joshua, you got it over there? Are you over there uh, on YouTube still, Joshua? I knew he was there earlier. Uh, this never works, though. Let's see if it'll work this time. Nope. <laughs> I think, actually, maybe if I do fractal. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, there it is. So um, this was a, a picture of uh, the billiard ball theory. Disregard all this stuff. It's not important. Um, and so if you just take this image right here and then um, I'm not quite sure I have that. That right there, you can sort of see the similarities of that. I know it's not really the best example. Where you got like this dip, this dip, this shoulder, this shoulder kind of idea. Um and uh, oh darn it, I lost the damn chart. Yeah, so we got sort of a midpoint fulcrum here, then this dip, this dip, this shoulder, this shoulder, this dip. It was interesting on the pullback following this dip, right? The low there almost perfectly corresponded with that low. So it was almost like, um, you know, midpoint of the fulcrum, or fulcrum, right? Midpoint of the fractal. There's this action, which is almost exactly an inverse of this action. Uh, shoulder, shoulder, uh, back and forth, back and forth, uh, big rally up, big rally up, then a period of choppy, 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 right? And then this choppy, 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 choppy. And interestingly enough, um, you know, this doesn't necessarily have to equate to a big bull here. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a bull. Um, but if I overlay, if I, all I do is I just take this price action back to say this pivot high and then, uh, you know, take that price action, then flip it around to try and see what that fractal looks like. You get that image there, right? Um, I don't know whether that's going on Q or not, or whether this is like an inverse one this time or not, but it was really interesting. And I think the point I'm trying to make here is we're coming to some sort of apex here. Um, something should give through here. Now, it might be a big dump following that, right? But we're through sort of the fractally choppy back and forth side. Something's going to happen here uh, in the not too distant future. <laughs> oh, there's a bold prediction. Something's going to happen in the not too distant future. <laughs> Thanks for wasting my time, Brian. Um, you know, good conversation about 38.2s. Uh, I find it fascinating that this is basically this original downtrend line. Here we are again. So, really, you know, we need to trend line. Conversation wise, we need to see a W on the other side of this trend line to actually um, to uh, to get super bullish. And then I remember I started off the conversation with this whole sort of Wyckoff check kind of thinking um, and how uh, really what we really need is we need some sort of underside test of all these levels. It's interesting when we sort of zoom out on this profile, you notice that 
You know, I mean, a hell of a lot of business. You can definitely see where the puck is, and that was our short trade location. Arr, you know. But interesting how this valley right in here, right, and we like to call this a muak, all the level twoers just did this. Um, notice how that's against 38.2, the muak there, uh, and basically against that original market structure. So I'm still thinking that the market wants to push up here, but what I'm worried about is that we get the push up, um, it hits 38.2s, it does the muwaks, everybody gets all bullish, but there's no W on the other side of this, so it turns into one of these again. So be careful here. I definitely, it sure definitely feels like they're pushing the market up, and I definitely wicks and tails like to be eaten. Trend line, you know, do we actually go up and take out that high entirely? I don't know, that's a tough one. Technically, I think you, uh, you can make the argument that... Um, we can go something along those lines. Actually, you could go all the way up against that if you wanted to. Uh, even, it's awfully flat, eh? But even something along those lines. Um, you can see where the midpoint is. That's basically where we are right now. Um, and, you know, if we can push up into here, uh, I could very easily see a stab up into this area here. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, and I suppose you could argue, you know, if we, um, <clears throat> there is a big W. So, you know, if these bullish signals, you know, daily charts start to turn back up, all that kind of talk, we could technically start hunting bots here. 33, 66. So, uh, we'll just throw this out there. It's still very early in development. But. There's definitely things like this on the table. <coughs> so, uh, you know, trend line wise, a bit suspect here. Um, but we got one low, two lows. Like we said, we're actually seeing maybe if we're lucky, a third low coming in here. Might give you the opportunity over the next day or two, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, kill zone, a nice little test of this uh, mid-channel uh, point line to hunt some sort of bullish fractal in here um, to try and uh, to trade this. And really, we've talked about that. You know, there is that horizontal support and resistance. 38.2s, there's 50%. Right, we could even argue this 9200 would fill in all of this muak, take us back to this structural fail level. So keep your eyes peeled. Right, there might be half decent little long setups here to uh, try and take us back up top here, developing. And you know, like I said, if this turns back bullish here, then actually I have to. This whole model will flip to hunting bullish signals. It isn't right now, and frankly speaking, it looks a little heavy here in the short term. Uh, but, you know, this could very easily turn back bull, and if that's the case, then it's back uh, long Lambo talk time. Okay, um, I don't know whether you guys got any value out of any of that, but I uh, sure hope uh, there was some value. Uh, I do see a couple. There's one question there. How about Ada? Uh, let's go take a look. Let's all go to the lobby. What time is it? Yeah, I've been bobbing for about an hour and change, so that's probably good. Uh, ADA. Now, what do you want to look at this thing? Is the crypto mass adoption? Are you here? What do you want to look at it versus Bitcoin, versus uh, US dollars, versus Ethereum, versus Canadian dollars? What do you want to look at it? Uh, crypto mass adoption says USDT. All right, let's see what we got here. Ada USDT over on Binance there versus Tethers. Oh man, yeah. 
So that's probably the state of crypto in a, in a picture, eh? You sure would like to see these things uh, turn the corner and start trending higher. Is there anything with uh, any longer uh, dated uh, data? I sure would like to see what it looked like back here. Uh, they got these things versus trading view. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that, oh, interesting. So if that's where the market started, that's probably pretty important information. Um, so I don't know. Tough to say where we want to analyze this. Mm, let's see, what does that tether look like? And then, uh, are you over there on Binance or where are you? Are you on Trex? Is anybody still on Trex anymore? Not much data there. <clears throat> There's Kraken, ADA versus US. No, not much data there. Okay, well, um, we'll do, you know, I think I'd rather do this because at least we get a bit, a little bit longer dated picture. Maybe Huawei's got something. No, uh, nobody has done data. So at least you see the bottom there. Um, you know, I mean, of course, uh, you probably want me to tell you, oh, it's straight up from here. You're guaranteed to make money. And, of course, uh, that's never the case in this game. I think you can make the argument if you were a bull and you wanted to try and sneak in, are we at or below reload zones? Looks pretty good. So you're not walking into a trap here, so that's good. Looks like we had like a three bar fractal that fired right on this candle a few weeks ago. That was sort of like the whole head fake that the market got sucked into there. Uh, yeah, let's make this a little thinner. Something like that. Uh, Hmm, that's a tough one. Uh, something along those lines. So, uh, you know, I definitely could understand like traders taking a shot off of that level. Morgan enjoyed a bit of a rally and then crapped right out and broke down. Well, that doesn't, doesn't surprise me in this game. Uh, traders got a trade. In this case, uh, got stopped out. Did notice, um, and I saw this on a lot of these names, like Litecoin's done the same sort of thing. In comes, you know, right after the stop out, in comes another inside bar. Uh, you know, glutton for punishment. You know, I used to ask Linda Bradford Rajki, uh, how many times uh, should we uh, try and take a level? If we're interested in the market, and she said, I always uh, uh, go with two. And if after two, it still doesn't work, then I admit that my thesis is wrong. So this might be actually a really good example where your first uh, stab fails, but you got to stay focused and this one might just work. If you are a candle uh, stick type of person, all right. Um, you know, just looking at this simple chart, uh, I don't really see anecdotal evidence of a bull trend in volume. Notice when this thing was getting ready and starting to move up, look how the volume here was heading down, then it perked up, then it came down, and then it started to perk up, and then it broke out. So it's it's almost like it was like it was stair stepping its way lower, then it started to actually stair step its way higher. So I mean that's sort of the sign of a bull. Um, if we throw on things like um, <coughs> indicators, right, perfect. So you notice how OBV is uh, turned back up basically on that change from sort of the bulls sort of quieting down to the bulls starting to wake up. And you see that in the OBV there. Mm -hmm. um, this latest signal, this first one here, 
you have the smatterings, but look how far away the uh, the indicator is from, say, moving average down here. So that might have sort of given you pause. And you sort of look at the um, price momentum indicators. I love the idea of having uh, location, then divergence, then structure, then go. So, you know, even if you zoomed in here and you were like, ooh, there's a bullish fractal trying to fire. Do we have any signs of bullish divergence in our indicators yet? Not really. You know, that was, uh, I guess, back here. Cute little double bottom trying to come in here on OBV, but it was sort of like the start. Kind of like you see how this move here was the start of this one. Uh, but really what you wanted to see was you want to see that continuation. And then you really want to see higher highs and higher lows on the volume bars. Um, <clears throat> I do kind of like this one, I got to admit. Now keep in mind, Sunday, uh, this is a weekly chart. So, you know, Sunday's uh, this this bar could totally crap out here by the end of today but I, my hunch is no it won't uh would like to see you know that sort of w action in the uh, volume bars like we sort of talked about here would really like to see that to say that yeah this thing's ready to rock and roll buyers are piling in here um nice to see on a weekly basis willie is officially stupidly oversold so again, sort of more talk about location and uh, reload zones. You can use Willie as sort of an indicator. Well, I'm not walking into a trap, so that's good. Um, do we have any sort of signs out of W's? Uh, uh, you know, W's out of um, price momentum oscillators. If we take a look at RSI, we notice that RSI just broke to a new low here. So uh, no signs of W's just as of yet. All right, see that break to new lows. Um, so probably, you know, and like Julian, he loves to do his RSI sort of trend lines. Probably something along those lines. That's resistance right in there. And gee whiz, that's going to be right around the 50 line. So this thing's got lots of room to play with in here, right? My hunch is it probably does something like that, like that. And then if it starts Wing, then, you know, price momentum wise, we're ready to rock and roll. My hunch is probably actually there to there. Yeah, that's probably your short term resistance in RSI. So you can see we're starting to get up into that sort of resistance area. I don't know whether you can see that on YouTube or not. Yeah, it looks like you can. <clears throat> um, can we have a W from December 2108 to October 2019? Was that 2018 to 2019? Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, let's go take a look. Uh, anyway, uh, price momentum wise, eh, nothing really to write home about. What you want to see is you want to see sort of like WE type action. Like, okay, we're ready to rock and roll. So, um, I guess the way that I would look at this, and this is, and, and you know, for investors, crypto mass adoption, this is actually what you'd really like to see. Is this is an extremely wide base. This is over a full year. If anything, what I'd actually like to see is uh, I think I showed you guys uh, probably one of my best crypto trades. Mind you, there was a few that were just notorious. <laughs> but uh, this Verge, uh, XVG, you know, to me, and I wouldn't even be surprised if this thing gets delisted at some point. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, where the hell's the best place to look at this? Uh, you know, this is the kind of market that I think we're in right now. I distinctly remember going through this uh, with this community where to sort of mark a bottom in the market what you actually really want to see is you want to see what's called a narrow sideways channel so hopefully you can see that this thing sort of parked itself after just absolutely insane this is uh, I guess 2015 um, you know market comes down parks itself into a channel and just sits there and this was basically a full year um, and that base sort of, you know, it let all momentum indicators and stuff clean themselves up. As soon as volume starts coming in here again on the long side, that led to that kind of craziness. 
So uh, if anything, uh, looking at your little idea now, uh, that's actually what I'm thinking. I'd, uh, what I'd really like to see is just all this stuff go sideways, just clean itself up, the public lose complete interest, and it just park itself. And if you believe in that narrow sideways channel thesis, then really what you have to do as traders is you have to force yourself to buy against the bottom end of range and sell against the top end of range. And the interesting thing about this is just even this trading range alone should be able to afford you the opportunity to be able to double your money. Um, so interesting, you know, and I like working at weekly charts. Absolutely. Uh, to answer your question uh, totally, um, that and really that would be like a massive monthly W. That would look something like that. I think that's what you were talking about, a eh? crypto mass adoption. Um, so you'd want to see nice big fat closes up here. And if that comes in, I mean, that's the irony of it all is if and when that actually does happen, it's going to be like that verge when it broke out of that channel. Nobody was interested in it. So maybe this thing goes sideways for another year or so, just completely dead. And then it'll just quietly go and break out through the top of this massive long term W and you know, the bulls back. Uh, right now, what I would say is that this is a total trading range market. And that doesn't mean you can't make money. Uh, I think you can make lots of money in a trading range. Uh, and as I said just a moment ago, I, I get the distinct impression that guys who can force themselves to come in and buy against the bottom end of the range and look to sell against the top end of the range, I think they will make money. Um, is there a trade per se here right now? That's yeah, a tough one. I mean, I do like location. I do like, um, you know, the inside weekly bar. I do like how OBV is trying to turn. I don't like how price momentum is very wishy-washy. But at the same time, too, I do love the fact that basically Willie is washed out. Um, if we go down to the daily charts, you know, there is that latest weekly fractal level. This actually reminds me a lot of what kind of like Litecoin looks like right now. Uh, you know, we had our previous double bottom. I mean, if you were really slick, you got in here and maybe through this chop up here, if you were getting chicken shit, you just said, get me the hell out of there. Maybe, you know, 50% of anticipated move. I don't think that that would have been hit, but, you know, uh, this is a tough one. I mean, I do believe, and I even got sucked into the euphoria. I was feeling pretty optimistic. I got busted out on that little blockchain stock that I bought. So same sort of a conversation. And I notice it's trying to, to put in a new bottom. Um, and I think that's sort of the market state. So here is another setup, you know, uh, buying, um, what is this number here? Uh, 406, let's call it 407, make it nice and simple. Um, um, well, maybe I might even say, I don't know where the W is here. Is this 34791, 34.8? Actually, it looks like it's a break of this level. So that's 409.35. So your double bottom there is 409.35. Oh, yeah, we had this uh, set on the weekly fractal level there, right? So daily double bottom, weekly fractal level. I mean, the trade's there. You can see the uh, W and OBV. You can see the rising volume bars. I don't really get any signs of confirmed divergence here off of um, the uh, MACD, which I love when I see, uh, you know, MACD bull divs uh, with Willie Stupid. Uh, and W's, I start to think El Tangonator and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, this is interesting, this cute little trend line that we drew off the weekly charts. You know, it, this is basically a trend line of this market structure. So if we look at this, you notice the market pretty much respected this. This is the trap. Don't buy the breakout through the trend line. There's got to be a W on the other side of the trend line. Sure enough, the market dumped back below it. Here we go again. Let's not get sucked into buying ahead of the trend line break. Show me a W on the other side of the trend line. 
And I think that's probably the best anecdote of this market here, right? We really want to see some sort of WE action on the other side of this trend line. And I think you probably got something here. Um, so there you go. Full meal deal. But you didn't expect me to spend an hour talking about your coin there, eh? <laughs> okay, uh, I've now, holy crap, talked way too much. Um, that was a cute little sort of walkthrough on, a, on an idea here. Eh, you know, I do see potential trade setups. Uh, I do see other setups forming. Um, and I don't think you're walking into a trap, so that's a good idea. Um, and... Um, and really, you know, you just got to live a trader's life. I mean, what I actually like, and I know it's really simple and it's really stupid, is just to simply place your open order, boom, you would have been filled here, and you just risked against this low here. And so in this case, you would have been filled here. Oh, I'm smart. Oh, no, no, I'm not very smart. Oh, I'm less smart. Oh, I'm smart again. Oh, now I'm back not smart. But the irony of it all is the trade's actually just working. It's just trading this market structure here. And that's the kind of trade that I did recently on, um, oh, I don't want to get into it. I got to stop talking. It's already quarter past 12. I got to get out of here and get ready for the boy. Okay, so have yourselves a great day, everybody. I hope you got some value out of that. I did ask one, uh, answer one question. Um, somebody had asked uh, earlier on, right off the bat, if I could take a look at um, the uh, yield curve uh, and uh, comment about interest rates. Uh, so that sounds to me like somebody is on the site. So why don't we talk about that in tomorrow's daily brief tomorrow? Uh, and we'll do a full rundown of uh, yield curve and implications. So uh, who asked that question right off the bat? Uh, and my apologies to Frog and Teresa and anybody else who's having problems getting into uh, the site right now. Like I said, Rocket Chat's total mess. And so. Uh, uh, bear with us here. Uh, there it was. Uh, Mer Merchant. Merchant, uh, can you tune into the Daily Brief tomorrow and I'll specifically talk about that? Merchant, if you're still around, uh, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Have yourselves a great day, everybody. All the best and bye.